Yes, I'm going to try running Code Talker correctly this time. Even on a first turn. At least that's what I'd say, but I still make some pretty boneheaded moves. Okay, the Ash blossomed me, so I can't just pull in another card of Lady Debug, which kind of sucks. Use Solomon Great Circle here, but I'm not sure it really helped. Alright. Yes, I'm just going to start off the combo using Code Radiator. This is where I make a mistake. I should not have gone for Micro Coder since I already have Cynet Codec. I should have put Ibli in my hand then. That was a bad move. I should have used Spec Up Secretary instead to get the Transcode Talker. Because of that, one of my cards will have to die unnecessarily. Now I'm going to need a Signet Mining to make up for my mistake, in order to actually get Ibli later on. Okay, now I use Code Generator. This will allow me to put a certain Dotscaper into my graveyard. Yeah, I'm just using the Cookie Cutter combo before doing the U-Link. If I try to do a lot of cheat sheet, I make mistakes. I had to practice a lot in uh, during the solo mode. Since solo mode actually lets you use your own custom deck for some of the duels. Usually the end duels. Okay, your chain order actually matters here. You have to make uh, Code Talker inverted chain link 1 so that Cyanet Codec can pull in a card before Code Talker can choose a card. Talkback Lancer is the reason why I had to free up my right side extra monster zone. That way I can use the left side zone for something else. Well, on the another one. For this, I use Splash Mage instead of Code Talker because at this point I already used up Cynet Codec for the Dark type. So there's no point. Okay, here's the one of the most critical parts. Firewall Dragon. Not only is it good for middle co-linking, it also can bounce enemy cards if needed. Alright, now I get Transcode Talker back thanks to Talkback Lancer. Firewall Dragon effects are cu are kind of weird with the t uh, with the way the game asks you for the effects since it'll always ask for its first effect first rather than its second even when you think it should be the second one so you, you kind of have to be careful of that okay now I got the U link and I can put Ibli on the other side of the uh, on the opponent's field Got the Sanctuary in case they try to uh, uh, crash Ibli into another monster. I actually made a huge misplay here as well. I should have turned the Dotscaper into a Link 1 monster, and then sacrificed that with a, one of my Link 3 monsters to create Avramax. That would have given me more protection for the enemy turn. And now it's the opponent's turn. Here's the scary part. They're an Eldritch player. But they made a critical error. They could have used Eldritch to pop Ibli instead of one of my main monster zone cards. So now this means they cannot get rid of Ibli. They can only use Eldritch's hand effect once per turn. And they scooped because they probably realized they had no way out of that without it popping Ibli. Okay, confirm opponent's deck. Let's see, they they definitely had free Ash Blossoms to mess up my own combo. Not that I need any help messing up my own combo. <laughs> yeah, Th that was a very bad play on my part. I should not have used... Uh, if I had done this right, I wouldn't need to use Cynet Mining to get to Ibli. 
so I ended up sacrificing that Gazelf for pretty much nothing. So, yeah, so it says you can send this card and one spell slash trap from your hand to the graveyard. Target one card in the field, send it to the graveyard. And technically, it would actually get past destruction effect since it says send to graveyard instead of destroy. But still, the, the really sh uh, it, it, it doesn't specify which field it, it, it can be used on, so that means it should be able to be used on either s field. So they could have just used it on Ibli, but even if they did use it on Ibli, they would still have to deal with Firewall's Dragon's double bouncing. Or single bouncing if they managed to get rid of one of the monsters next to it first. Well, I'm sure they learned their lesson after reading all the card effects, so the next time they face a U-Link player, they'll know what to do. They'll know how to use Eldritch against Ibli instead of one of the other monsters. So yeah, I may have just made things harder for another U-Link player, but U-Link is considered kind of a cheese strategy anyway, so maybe it's for the best. Of course, Eldritch is also cheese, so I just helped an Eldritch player in the long run, didn't I?